Well, welcome back, ladies and gents. Sinead here at Free Tours by Foot London. Uh, today's little journey on the 3rd of May, bank holiday in London. Four day weekend for some people, no rest for the wicked like myself. But today's journey, I'm gonna take in a little trip around Covent Garden and Neil's yard. <laughs> take you uh, close around to the Seven Dials area. Uh, Covent Garden, one of the most visited areas in the West End and uh, known for literally about 16 theatres, 60 bars, amazing restaurants, fabulous shopping. We're going to head through the markets as well today. Um, street entertainers, buskers, performers. In fact, the first mention of Covent Garden street entertainers was in Samuel Pepys's diary in the 1600s and he made reference to the very first Punch and Judy show, puppet show, that we believe was performed here in Covent Garden. But uh, I've just come out, firstly, at Leicester Square, Tube Station, and we're making our way down at the wonderful Cecil Court. Now, this is one of the prettiest streets in London. Reputedly, one of three locations used as an influence for Diagon Alley in the Harry Potter movies, but I just want to take you along the street because it's some collection of the most beautiful Victorian shop frontages in London. Now famous for its antiquarian bookstores, here's Cecil Court. Antiquarian bookstores, art deco jewelry stores, priceless coins and old banknotes. Such a beautiful Victorian street along here. Some wonderful art along the way as well. Some of the bookstores, now you can get some of the newer first editions that are available on here. So it also became the heart of the film industry and it was known as Flickr Alley. As it says there in the green plaque, British film pioneers Cecil Hepworth and James Williamson had offices here, along with a lot of international film companies. But Writer's Row, it's also known as as well. It's a beautiful little street here. Just a corner street and it's easy to miss it. It's just at the corner of Leicester Square when you come through. Now it also had another famous, very temporary residence in the area. Coming up in just a moment. Let me just show you some of these beautiful shop fronts along the way. There's a couple of more blue plaques on the window there. Beautiful Art Deco jewellery store. And we are going over here because I just wanted to show you another famous resident on the street. It was a very young boy by the name of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. And Mozart lived above this shop. It was a barber's called John Cousins and they were on an international music tour with his family. Tickets for private audiences were Mozart was sold by John Cousin's barber store. Uh, some say it's where he wrote his first symphony, but uh, others will say that was on Ebury Street in Belgravia. His first symphony was K-16. He performed two private performances actually in there for George III of England, you guys. So yeah, big stop on the Harry Potter tour as well. Again, a couple of guides will say different locations, but on our Harry Potter tour, this is, and we'll just turn around again there so you can see it, the influence for Diagon Alley in the JK Rowling Harry Potter series of books. It's a beautiful little street there. Now we're gonna head down here. I'm gonna take you across New Road Tavern. And Mrs. Fogg's Tavern is right on the corner here. But this is the theater district, of course. Straight ahead is the No Coward Theatre. This pub is rather interesting, actually. Salisbury, Salisbury Pub. I'm just going to turn around so you can get a better look in just a moment. The Salisbury was named after a three times Prime Minister here in Great Britain, Lord Salisbury. Has a bit of dark history as well, actually, unknown to a lot of the gentlemen in Soho. Uh, it was a very welcoming uh, pub for the gay community, actually. Oscar Wilde was known to have a tipple in here. 
This is where Dennis Nielsen picked up the uh, second victim. Well, he did survive, actually. Dennis Nielsen was a famous serial killer here in London. Uh, he murdered 17 men, but one of his victims was picked up here, and he was fortunate enough to escape, and he did go to the police, however, refused to testify against him for fear, no doubt. And Nielsen went on to kill another 16 men. So rather tragic dark history. Here's the Noel Coward Theatre. Theater. There's quite a few theatres along here. This is St. Martin's Lane. And another couple down the end. In the church at the bottom, you see, there's a beautiful St. Martin in the Field Church. And that's in Trafalgar Square. That's where Prince Charles actually was baptised. But this huge, beautiful building on the left is the London Coliseum. And that is one of the first theatres in London to have electricity, actually. Second building in London. The Savoy was first, but the Coliseum is the largest theatre in London. Now it's home to the English National Ballet. Also the first day, I believe, to sell Coca-Cola in there. And then man's Claridge's, I think it was. It was either Claridge's or Selvages that served Coca-Cola. So Mrs. Fogg's Tavern, a fabulous Victorian building. Beautiful inside. Very atmospheric. and named after Phileas Fogg, the fictional character who traveled around the world in 80 days. According to the Jules Verne novel, this is a blue plaque dedicated to his aunt, Gertrude Fogg, again fictional, of course. And this little street up here will take us towards Covent Garden. So it is a very short walk from Leicester Square to Covent Garden. Now, the wonderful thing about Covent Garden is that it facilitates the theater Get some great early bird menus up here. But a fabulous place for an outdoor bit of brunch or lunch or dinner. Um, we are still... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Our next phase of lockdown opening up is the 17th of May. So currently the pubs and everything is open in London. We are open and welcoming guests on our public tours. But the next phase will be indoor dining. Amazing art store there. Right now it's outdoor dining only. For and drinking. That's Bedford Bury Street. And that's named after the first Earl of Bedfury. Now the origin of the term Covent Garden. It was originally Convent Garden. Because it was literally an abbot. Um, well, it was tended to the land here by the monks of Westminster. So it was like arable land with orchard and they tended to some crops so originally it's a corruption of convent garden so coven garden developed in the 17th century by the first earl of bedford he was commissioned inigo jones some would say the very first architect in the world who built some amazing mansions for the upper class and the gentry he was also commissioned to build a beautiful little church around here that I'll be showing you shortly as well. Let's take a little stroll up here because I want to bring you down the back streets. Um, there's a method in my madness. I'll be taking you through to just a little parts of Covent Garden that people tend to forget about. The beautiful little local pub there as well, the Lemon Flag hidden away in that alcove. Nice for an outdoor pint, a pint of ale or craft ale if you like, whatever your preference is. Now we'll be taking a look at a few of the restaurants along the way as well. I'm hoping there'll be a few street performers today. As I say, it's a bank holiday Monday, 3rd of May, about 13 degrees. Slightly windy today, there are gusts of wind, so hopefully that won't affect the sound that much. This beautiful building here was a former missionary and a former school. That's going to take us up to Floral Street. Now the restaurant isn't open yet today at the moment, but right in here, and a Peruvian food is having a huge moment in London at the moment, but they are the first Peruvian restaurant to gain a Michelin star. So there's two locations actually. There's one here in, in Covent Garden and there's one in Fitzrovia. 
So if you're looking for a good Peruvian restaurant, Floral Street in Covent Garden. But coming up here, I want to show you this beautiful area. So you'll see we're all on the side streets, these lovely cobbled streets. A reflection of the time when the method of transportation in London was horse and carriage. It's estimated up to 10,000 tons of horse manure were deposited on the streets of London on a daily basis. That cannot have been pleasant. Another word you'll see all over London is M-E-W-S, mews, meaning street stables. And they've now been converted into amazing little houses and apartments. One of the more famous mews in London is the Queen's Mews, and I will be taking a little tour of Victoria shortly as well. And the Queen's Mews is one of the finest working stables in the world. You can visit inside and see a procession of the Queen's beautiful royal carriages and a fleet of her cars, including her Benny Now Let's take a little venture down here. Two beautiful streets. So this is the perfect place for an Instagram. If any of you favour the gram up there, this is where you come for your perfect Instagram picture. Now we're heading through this little tunnel here. Because this is a little secret back alley here. And I just want to show you how beautiful. There's two restaurants down here for outdoor dining. Now it's early yet, it's only five past one. So it will get a little busier later on. So this is a good time. Oh, actually there's quite a few here having lunch. Just give you an idea in behind the trees. Gorgeous little place and they have lovely outdoor heating canopies, etc. So there's heaters there as well. So we're gonna head through here elephants and this will take us out onto King Street so don't forget to kind of head down these back alleys around Covent Garden and particularly in London in general you never know what you'll find this is what we're all about is finding these lovely little secret alleys and places if you are adventuring yourself but of course the best way to see London is to take a tour with us free tours by foot. All our public tours are up and running at the moment. But of course, if you'd like to take a private tour, our details are always available as well, including my own. So the main piazza area is straight ahead, but I want to take a little detour. So I want to show you one of the nicest little places in London. So a lot of street food, and you can pick up some food if you like. And sometimes it's a little difficult to find somewhere to sit but not when you're welcome at me, you guys, because I'll find a place for you. This street is King Street. Just looking for my mask here now, you guys. I'll have to put my mask on if we're gonna be heading in here. So as you can see, some wonderful boutiques and shopping along here. Charlotte Tilbury is down here. Mac is down here. Ralph Lauren is down here. Some really nice high-end stores as well. But I want to take you Oh, and it's closed, the backyard. So let's see if I have access any other way. Oh, we were going to head in here to St. Paul's Church, but it seems to be closed maybe for Sunday service. Don't worry, we will come back. I'll do another little short on that in the next few days. So let's head around the actual square itself. Now in the 1700s, this place was an area for the upper classes and it had a little um, fruit and vegetable market and fruit and flower market right in the center here. But with the amount of bars and tea house and gambling dens cropping up, what happened was it attracted a lot of the, let's just say giddy of society. Shall we go with the ladies of the night and brothels? brothels popped up left right and center here some of them were more professional actually one gentleman wrote a guide to the best brothels in London and they would have taken their business on top of these buildings up here so it was an area of ill repute shall we say for a period of time but it was in 1830 that this piazza was laid out by Charles Fowler this beautiful building here in the center and it made it a bit more organized so it attracted 
more of the theatres. The Royal Opera House is here, the National Transport Museum. But first, let's go and have a look at one of the street performers. Very famous here. They're all licensed street performers. It's a very professional now. This is La Lurie, Paris. Very famous for their macaroons. Beautiful for an afternoon tea. So if you're enjoying the tour so far, go ahead and hit the like button and help others discover the video. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel. We also have virtual tours and channels that focus on Washington, D.C., New Orleans, and more. Look for free tours by foot wherever you travel. Now, back to the tour. One last little trick before the finale. I do it because it's a good trick and it usually gets a really good reaction. It's called the nine box stack and it usually gets a really good reaction because I always explicitly ask for one. Thank you. When the bell's got my face, everybody has a team, clap and cheer. Try to get some hype around the show. Get ready for the grand finale. The best part of this guy throws his knives at me. Alright, it's a nine box stack. It's a good trick when it works. When it works. Looks like this. Ooh. 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 So just about time for the punch and genie. Alright, and of course they've done the first punch and genie show that took place in here. And we're gonna make everybody happy through Apple hey, Market here. Are you ready for the crap finale of the show? Say yeah! I just want to show you all the outdoor diners. So this is the apple market section. Now you can get all types of um, items here. A lot of arts, a lot of crafts, some beautiful stalls with jewelry and silver. Monday, which is today, is particularly antiques day. So if you're an antique hunter and you're looking for a great bargain, why not head down here? show you the antique section of the Apple Market on a Monday. Get your sunglasses, beautiful silver jewelry. It's always where my eye is drawn to first. Come straight through here. So not as many stalls as usual, some uh, ornate skulls for the goths and all of us. And some beautiful antique jewelry. Now people are queuing up to get inside here. Lovely outdoor place to eat. Now let's head through the South Hall here. Just want to show you some of the shops along the way. So there are quite a few around today, which is great to see. So this is the South Hall. And there is your sign for the Punch and Duty pub upstairs there. But I want to take you around to see some of the theatres. Now, this is world famous usually for the soprano recitals here. I always get some amazing performers. Let me show you this gorgeous little area down here for outdoor dining. So always keep these on your list. There's something to suit everybody's taste here in Covent Garden. There's Italian restaurants, French restaurants. The oldest restaurant in the UK is Rules is situated here. That's featured in many shows like Downton Abbey and over the years the likes of Oscar Wilde, Byron, Shelley have all eaten in Rules. Bring you. So this is just a short little trip. Obviously we have a Covent Garden tour on our public tour schedule with free tours by foot. So if you are interested in joining us for a free tour, we're welcoming everybody back. We're looking forward to seeing you all again. We've had to get a bit inventive with our touring at the moment. Virtual tours are the way to go. Now, no performer at the moment but always seems to be setting up, but this is where you usually get some wonderful performances from amazing singers. The little waves, please support the performances. And usually when you're standing up here, and if you do enjoy a performance, it's encouraged that you just leave a small little tip for the uh, performers. 
They're usually very talented. I'm assuming the gentleman is finished, which is a shame at the moment. Is he finished? Oh, yeah. Even nowadays, you can tap to tip using your contactless payment. Um, just a handy tip for you. Most places here in London now, it's all contactless payment. Cash is accepted, of course. Oh, there's another gentleman about to start up. But do you know what we do? We go for a little adventure first, and then we'll come back and hear him. I just want to take you around to see some of the more famous theatres. Look at that beautiful sign there. Sugar and Snuff Parlour in Covent Garden. Now, let's just give you an idea of how beautiful this building is. The roof overhead. So, a wonderful covered shopping market. The Jubilee Market is temporarily closed, but... Um, market stalls along here are usually souvenirs and uh, London souvenirs. This is how people make their living. There's a lovely little store up here actually. Let's have a look. These ones are closed today. They're taking the bank holiday off. This gentleman has some beautiful little floral arrangements there. It's so wonderful for gifts. Unique gifts as well. Now let's take a look up and around here. So as I was saying about these outdoor little food stalls, you can get them all along here. Grab yourself a duck burger. This is the museum, the National Transport Museum. And it's to do with all things about, to do with the London Underground, the London Transport Museum. The um, steam train and the first underground, the history of the underground here in London. The oldest underground rail network in the world. And the prototype, if you like, for undergrounds all over the world. Established in 1863. Now we're on Russell Street. Balthasar up here is quite a famous restaurant. I believe there's a really nice one in New York as well. Actually, there is another restaurant here called the Ivy. Very famous restaurant. It's a huge celebrity haunt, I believe, in LA, but the first Ivy was here in Covent Garden. Now, this is also where Samuel Johnson first met a chap called James Boswell. Now, Samuel Johnson is featured on our City of London tour. Dr. Samuel Johnson, he compiled the first of the English Dictionary. Samuel Johnson was the first to say, a man who's tired of London is tired of life. So there's just a little bit of information for you. You can uh, screenshot it and have a look afterwards. But around here is the Theatre Royal Drury Lane. Now, this is the oldest working theatre in London and reputedly the most haunted. We're coming up in it right ahead of you there, that big lemon coloured building right on the corner, but I'm going to bring you right there. opening night here. Yeah, that's a Her Majesty's Theatre. That's been playing in Her Majesty's Theatre. That's on Haymarket. You guys, that theatre is owned by Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber. And no surprise then that it's been showing there for the last 25 years or so. Just bear with me one second. So this is the Theatre Royal Drury Lane. Now this is where a very famous young girl, an orange seller by the name of Nell Gwynn, at 14 years of age was employed in here. She eventually became a very famous actress in London, but she caught the eye of one of the more famous monarchs in London, King Charles II, the Merry Monarch. But reputedly, seven different mistresses. This is one of his more famous. So this is a pub dedicated to Nell Gwynn, Nell of the Old Drury. And she had children belong to Charles II, illegitimate children, because he had 18 illegitimate children in 
total by all accounts. Um, the Royal Jury Lane Theatre, the Theatre Royal Jury Lane rather, is the oldest working theatre in London and has the Royal Warren you'll see there. 1700s. Several productions. The most recent that was there actually, it was played there for years, I'm trying to remember. Kitties, I can't remember now, ladies and gents, but Frozen is going to be opening up this year. Now, there's another famous theatre, and it's where Mamma Mia, it's the Old Witch Theatre, Mamma Mia is playing. Another very popular one. I'll take you around Tavistock Street here. Now, the area straight ahead of you is an area that's straight ahead called Old Witch, or Old Town, Old Wick, Old Town. Beautiful patisserie there, another Instagram worthy shot. And this street is Tavistock Street. Usually bustling with people for lunchtime trade, but a lot of people tend to take Bank Holiday Mondays off in London. I find it a great time to have a little look around. Families are usually out in force to give their children a good day out. Now, a very interesting place that opened up here very recently is around the corner and it's the film museum so it celebrates everything to do with the British film industry but it has an amazing collection the largest collection in fact of James Bond cars you see the Bond in Motion exhibition there's some life-size statues of Charlie Chaplin that's always worth a little visit if you're a huge Bond fan. So Ian Fleming, of course. Also, also the author of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Ladies and gents, and look at that beautiful museum. Pen Halligans, I can never pronounce that properly. Their perfumes are exquisite. But just down here, before we leave, at the very end of that street is the Lyceum Theatre. And you just make out the yellow signs, that's where the Lion King has been showing for years. The Lyceum Theatre it was also a very famous music venue. Pink Floyd have been live on stage in there. Bob Marley uh, recorded there, and the Wailers recorded the acoustic album Legends Live inside in the Lyceum Theatre. I believe you two have been live on stage there, also Jimi Hendrix. But again, more on that. If you're interested in the rock and roll history in London, we have a rock and roll video online on our YouTube channel, the Coach and Horses Pub. We'll be reopening on the 17th of May for indoor patrons, all indoor and outdoor. We're excited. The nice rooftop there, the Marquis of Anglesey. See the rooftop bar up on top. And that's another great idea in the summertime in London. Surprisingly enough, we do get some great summers here. People don't believe we do, but uh, we can go into the high 30s, which I think would be about the 90s in Fahrenheit. Now, Santonata over here. It's Portuguese, they do those beautiful little egg tarts and a great cup of coffee in here. But what I want to show you is straight ahead of you. So you'll see them all dining upstairs there on top of Arthur Fowler's beautiful building. That's Sushi Samba. But that's where the ladies of the night used to rent rooms up there for £250 a night. I wonder do they know that as they're tucking into their delicious sushi. Let this gentleman pass there. Now let's get a good screenshot of the atmosphere and what's happening around here today. There's a little van there selling you lovely Prosecco. There's the duck shed, duck burgers, duck wraps, duck salad. Another Prosecco van. Smoky. Gauche, oh, smoky gaucho. Looks like maybe burgers and sandwiches. The National Transport Museum. Oh, 
best outdoor dining here. Take a look around here. Look at a beautiful view of the Royal Opera House. Yes. Yeah, the Royal Opera House. I was reading there recently, it's had a massive reduction in profits because of COVID 19. It's lost 80% of its income, I believe, this year in 2020. So recently, they sold a David Hockney painting that had been hanging in there for decades. It's a painting of Sir David Webster. I believe it made 12.8 million pounds. So that was much needed funds to keep the Royal Opera House up and running. It's also Pygmalion has been performed in there. I think that was the first production actually. Incidentally, George Bernard Shaw's Pygmalion, which the musical adaptation of which was My Fair Lady, Eliza Doolittle was a flower seller in Covent Garden Market. I believe uh, Sir Alfred Hitchcock's famous 1972 movie Frenzy. It's about a serial killer. He too was a vendor in Covent Garden Market. Bars, theatres, restaurants, shopping, food. What more could you want, you guys? The street entertainers are a huge draw when they're in full force. So we're going to make our way to somewhere rather special that I want to show you. Um, I'm a bit disappointed about St. Paul's. St. Paul's Church was commissioned by Inigo Jones in 1631. The church we couldn't gain access to right now, but I will do a small little short video on that. And St. Paul's Church is known as the Theatre Church because it's long association with the theatre and with actors. In the churchyard there, there's a beautiful little seating area. So if you do grab something to eat on the go here, maybe even from sticks and sushi, you can head into that little courtyard and escape the mania. It's a beautiful, peaceful area. It's where the first plague victim actually is buried in the churchyard there, Margaret Petrus. She was buried there in 1665. Hello London and hello right back at you. Um, it's where the likes of um, Grinlin Gibbons, the famous carpenter or wood carver, he was baptised there. As was Turner, the famous British painter. And there's amazing dedications inside the church, so make sure you have a little look inside when you're there. There's a dedication to Vivian Lee, actually, and Sir Charlie Chaplin. So it's lovely to have a look inside the little church too. Now we're on St. James's Street. So originally, and I just want to explain to you about something here. As you're coming up here, you'll see Covent Garden Station. Covent Garden Station to Leicester Square is the shortest journey on the London Underground. In fact, you have to take an elevator in Covent Garden, which can take quite a while waiting to get down onto the platform and up again. It's shorter to walk than it is to actually take the tube. I believe it's only like 1.6 of a mile, the journey. This is the lovely White Lion pub here in the corner of Covent Garden. So here's Covent Garden Station. And we're just gonna leave Covent Garden temporarily because I'm gonna take you down Neal Street. The next head. So you have plenty of choices of pubs and outdoor dining when you arrive here. Charlotte Tilbury. Now there's Covent Garden Station, you guys. So I would recommend you get off at Leicester Square, and when you get off at Leicester Square. <laughs> The journey is, as I mentioned, the shortest journey in London. And Leicester Square too, unless you decide to take the route I've just taken, starts just right down this street. So you may see just a little green tree in the distance there. That's where Covent Garden Leicester Square Tube Station is. So it's just one direct straight route up. 
But right now, we're going to head down Hill Street. Off the back streets again, but as I mentioned, there's a method in my madness. So I intend to bring you somewhere really pretty. This street is also famous for the Roxy Club, a very famous punk music venue. But right now, again, rows of amazing streets of shopping again. So you have Mango here, you have Vans here, you have the Dr. Martin store all coming up. And the second row has quite a few vintage stores because we're heading towards Seven Dials, which is traditionally a very youthful area. Brandy, oh, there must be some sort of sample sale here today. They're waiting to get inside the door. Mango, now there's a gorgeous little puppy here in the corner of the Crown and Anchor. Now, in my previous live video around here, I explained to people that the, um, the name that's most frequently used on pubs in the UK actually is the Red Lion. But you will see a lot of Crown and Anchors in the area, a lot of Duke of Wellingtons, Lamb and Flags. And an interesting fact about this is particularly in Victorian times, illiteracy was very high particularly in the uh, more crowded and overpopulated areas like the East End. So you may have noticed that in most of the pubs outside of Britain, you have a symbol representing the name of the pub, the crown and anchor, as you can see there, and that was to facilitate people who couldn't read. So they knew exactly where they were going. That little corner side street, isn't it beautiful? Love that little pub on the corner. But again, we're heading down this direction. Gorgeous little cobble streets. <laughs> Always try to throw you some nice little chocolate samples <laughs> along the way. Well, that's the one good thing. I'm not getting uh, plagued by people asking me to stop and talk to them for a few minutes when they see me videoing you guys. But look at these beautiful little shop fronts. So colourful along here. Great little espresso bar, Neil Street Espresso. Seven Dials we're heading towards, which gets its name from it was the intersection between seven different streets. Now six actually, but originally seven, sorry. These pinks and Purples. Now, this is the location of the Roxy. A uh, very famous punk venue here. Susie and the Banshees, the Stranglers, the Clash have all performed inside here in what was formerly the Roxy. There's a dedication to it here, I think. Yeah, I'm going to show you that now. Now, beautiful covered mural here. There it is legendary Roxy Club. Short-lived, but a very famous one in the 70s. Susie and the Banshees, the Clash, the Stranglers, to name just a few. Down here again, so we're still continuing down Neil Street. Now, hopefully you'll be able to join us in person on these tours. If not, you can use these tours for reference, you guys, of how to get around. And to take these little back streets, you know, of London. It's always better to have a guide with you, however. So we have a reasonable idea where the best places are to eat, etc. Love this little vintage store too on Neil Street. It's Goldsmith Vintage. And one of my little favourite shops that I've only discovered most recently. Very cool little store up here. The Astrology Shop. It's great for incense sticks or beautiful salt rock lamps, sundials, books on your astrology and your sign. I brought a lovely little oil burner in there. It's a gorgeous little place in there if you have a quick little look inside. Very funky, little trendy. 
store. Right, let's head around here because this is the icing on the cake. Love this little place. Now, a lot of people don't really know about this. It is absolute Instagram heaven, however. Stunning, colourful little courtyard full of independent coffee shops, pizza stores, organic beauty products like Neil's Yard, Remedies, all small, lovely, independent businesses. And they're all located down here in this gorgeous little courtyard, which is a bit hidden off the beaten track. But bear with me, it's worth it. Now, if you are enjoying our little tours, ladies and gents, don't hesitate to click that bell, like and subscribe. We'll be doing a lot of live streams soon as well. Look at this gorgeous little one of Lady Diana. This was done by Bambi. She's a famous street artist in London. You can be as naughty as you want, just don't get caught. Isn't that lovely? And we're going to head in there to Neil's yard. I want to show you this beautiful, colourful, hidden away corner in London. Just off Neil Street, crossing Covent Garden, towards Seven Dials. Actually, Monty Python lived in that one of the creators of Monty Python lived in that building there on the left with the orange in it. This is taking you around this area. People are looking at me rather strangely. I think they think I'm talking to myself. They don't see the microphone. So, gorgeous little businesses here. Get anything from pizza to coffee to a lovely glass of wine to a great donut, some lovely chocolate. But I'm just bringing you down here because I want to get you a proper panoramic view of it. St. John's Bakery, Redemption. And have a look at this. So it's just absolutely beautiful. This is a lovely tucked away, hidden away, Neil's Yard. Take a little walk around here. I don't want to bother people too much. So Neil's Yard Rem Remedies, Natural Health and Therapy Centre. Very famous now. Started out as a small independent business here and is now a worldwide business. So ethical, organic health and beauty. Right underneath here. So this is the gorgeous Neil's Yard. And we'll head back out again because I'm bringing you down to the crossroads down here. Okay. A great little shop front there as well, here by Ferry. Twenty inch pizzas, whole or by the slice. So that's one of those little hidden alleyways in London. Lovely little alcove, and we'll head back out again. I want to take you just down the street. So, if you have enjoyed the tour today, you guys, you know what to do like and subscribe. We have loads more on offer, loads more videos in the pipeline, but also already up on our YouTube site, and of course, our free tours by Foot London Facebook site. If you're interested in further tours around the world as well, we are operating in New York and New Orleans virtually. And it looks like it's gonna be the way of the future. We will be doing virtual tours and in-person public tours. If you're interested in any private tours, my name is Sinead, I'll be happy to take you around London. And if you have enjoyed the tour today, we also add a link there if you would like to buy me a coffee. There's a buy me a coffee link and there's also a link to my PayPal underneath any Donations are always very much appreciated. Trust me, they go. I always make sure they go on making very bad decisions. Any tips I receive. So, coming up very shortly in the pipeline, not too sure what we'll be doing. When that London does open up again, we will be filming things like the changing of the guard 
be heading into Soho for all the big occasions in Soho. So here is Seven Dives and here is the Sundial. Actually, there's only six on it, but it was originally seven different connecting roads to this area. Here's the Matilda Show. So don't forget, this great little part of London here. Street, and we're going to head down here very briefly. So, Rose's Thai Cafe is also a wonderful place for Thai food in London. There's several of them around London. A delicious ice cream. So, there's something for sweet and for savoury. Never go hungry in this part of town. I'm just going to bring you down to this area because I'm going to show you one of the most popular theatre shows in London. It's up to a two year waiting list the last time I looked it up. But always remember when you are visiting London, the theatre, you can get relatively inexpensive tickets at TKTS. Now there is a huge TKTS booth in Leicester Square. And queuing up is definitely worth it. They usually work on the principle of buying tickets for the, that day or the following day. And that is where you'll get your best discounted theatre tickets in London. Now, you guys, this is going to take us back out onto Charing Cross Road. So we're going to be nearly almost making, doing a full circle. It's Leicester Square. is coming up on the left very shortly. This is Shaftesbury Avenue, named after the Earl of Shaftesbury. And it goes straight down that street. But to give you the perfect view of the most popular show in London, actually comes in two parts. And if you are planning a trip, I would look up the tickets now actually, because you'd have a great chance of doing them if you're doing them six or eight months in advance. And in that wonderful building, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. By all accounts, an absolutely amazing show. The other most popular one is Hamilton, and that's in London, Victoria, in the Adelphi Theatre, but I'll be doing a, a tour of Victoria shortly as well. So for right now, we're going to be signing out, you guys. That's our little Covent Garden, Neil's Yard, Shaftesbury Avenue, St. Martin Lane Tour. And we're back on the Charing Cross Road. And just for reference, Leicester Square Tube Station right down on the corner. So if you have enjoyed the tour, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you most sincerely for joining me. And for live videos that I'll be live streaming coming up in the next few days, don't forget to like and subscribe to both our YouTube channel and our Facebook channel. But again, signing out from London. Thank you very much for watching, you guys. Time to head to London, Victoria. Speak to you soon. Honey.